Good morning. It's Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Keeping the Lights On, and our scriptures, Luke chapter 21, where Jesus teaches this. Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware like a trap, for that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. Keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Every day, Jesus went to the temple to teach, and each evening he returned to spend the night on the Mount of Olives. The crowds gathered at the temple early each morning to hear him. Like it or not, we all have a dance with issues of darkness. As a small child, I did not want to turn off the lights because darkness frightened me. I mean, things do go bump in the night, you know. As an adult, the table turned, and I cannot get to sleep if there's a light on. But that presents other problems, such as getting up in the middle of that darkness, thinking you'll have no problem getting through that darkness. After all, you've done it a thousand times, and you know where to walk, but this time you discover someone moved that chair. Rather, your bare foot finds out for you. On a spiritual plane, Jesus taught the principle of keeping the lights on. This entire chapter of Luke's Gospel has Jesus teaching of the end of days and the coming judgment. To be caught in the darkness of carousing, drunkenness, and all the worries of this life, and aren't there many, is to be unprepared for the advent, the next coming of our Lord. The word of Jesus' message is alert, and the Lord taught us how to do that. And there are three moving parts to keeping the spiritual lights on. First is pray. Philippians chapter 4. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. This is Paul the Apostle's advice to a church family he loved very much. The worries of life are no match for prayer. There's no mistaking the fact that praying is a trust issue. To pray is, in the language of the scriptures, to bind oneself to the care of another. We bind ourselves to God's will as we bow before him praying. And then secondly, keep praying. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, never stop praying. Paul told this other group of loved disciples at Thessalonica that a little now I lay me down to sleep praying will not suffice in spiritual warfare. You'll just wind up sleeping in the darkness. To never stop praying means just that. Keep yourself in prayer mode day in and day out. Be, as Paul told Timothy about his preaching, Always at it, in favorable circumstances or not. Make prayer an ongoing conversation with your Heavenly Father. And then thirdly, pray with other believers. Hebrews chapter 10. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Ours is not a solitary faith. It's true that we are individually responsible for our choices, those which lead to good or evil. But we are never to imagine we are to depend only on ourselves to muddle through. My single most annoying flaw, most annoying to me and to my Heavenly Father and probably you, is failing to enlist or involve others in my struggles. That's exactly what Paul writes to his fellow Jewish believers in this passage, that we cannot afford to experiment with aloneness when we're involved in the kingdom of God. It's a group project. I'm not sure God's people grasp that nearly as much as the world does. You've heard the diversity mania mantra, stronger together. That's co-opted from God's word to enforce a forced unity in people who resist change. 
and taking it back to the holy meaning of praying with other believers, we must keep on gathering because there's vital encouragement to be found in our worship. Times of giving, building, testifying, bowing before God in prayer and praise bring the kind of strength Jesus exemplified for us. For you today. So, will you be a go-it-alone Christian? Or does God's word now challenge you to engage with others, praying, never ceasing, always engaging? Eat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.